that's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Mulan, the live action version of uh, the Disney property, which will be finally released uh, on streaming and uh, in some theatrical venues September 9th, 2020. Uh, sorry, September 4th, 2020, courtesy of Disney, of course. Uh, it's the latest film directed by Nikki Caro. Uh, if you haven't seen the cartoon, which was 1998, eight. you probably wouldn't want to watch the live action version. That being said, if you haven't seen it, I'll describe the story quickly. It's set in old timey China, like 500 AD. The Northern Wei era, uh, which was 386 to 535 AD. So somewhere in there, uh, based on Chinese folklore. So Mulan's family, uh, it's just her mom, her dad, and her. And her sister. And her si She has a sister? Damn. The one that's afraid of spiders? I totally forgot about that. Anyway, there's a war going on, and there's a proclamation made that one man from every family needs to join the, um, the army. More or less, yeah. But Mulan doesn't want her dad to go, for obvious reasons. Well, he's handicapped. Plus, he's older and incapable. But the, So she decides she's going to go in his place. So she takes the proclamation. She goes, pretends to be a boy, like binds her chest, puts her hair up, and fights in the war. She It culminates with her sort of like saving her battalion or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. But then she reveals herself to be a woman or a young lady. And they say that she's disgraced. And they like... Kick her out of the army. Mm -hmm. She's exiled. Yes. She's exiled. And told that if she shows her face again, then they'll kill her. She'll be killed. But then what happens is she ends up saving the emperor. So then there's... The, this is where it divorces from the cartoon a little bit because she has the interaction with uh, Gong Li's witch uh, who tries to you know bring her to the dark side per se, uh, but also kind of gives her information uh, that alerts that the emperor is in danger. So she finds herself in the emperor's presence during this whatever situation where he's in danger and she saves him. Right? More or less. Yeah. We collapsed a few things, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. So the emperor honors her with like the highest honor mm -hmm. and like welcomes her back to the, um, the army. But she says, no, she needs to go back home and sort of like help her family regain honor. Right. The end. Who, oh, right. who, once she returns, are immediately welcoming to her, and uh, her father tells her it's a, you know an honor to have her as a daughter. Yeah. All right. How, where do you want to begin? What did you like about this film? Uh, so, I had never seen the cartoon, mm -hmm. because I was uh, like 20 when it came out. And I was in eighth grade, so I was not interested in cartoons at that point. Uh, so, I watched the cartoon two days ago. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. We did. Um, I didn't like the cartoon. What I liked about the cartoon was the dragon, who's voiced by Eddie Murphy. Yes, he... Which... He steals the show. He He's steals funny. the show, although Eddie Murphy has no business <laughs> being in a, a, film, a, a Chinese cartoon. But, um, but it, for, for whatever reason, yeah, he, he is the standout. Sure. The cartoon is less than 90 minutes, mm -hmm. so that worked well for me. This film is over 90 minutes. It's about an hour 45 before the credits start to roll, yeah. But the point is, I don't think I liked anything about this movie. Nothing. What do you like about it? Um, I thought that some of the action sequences were well choreographed. Um, I, I, you know, it, it, it gets... It starts to look a little like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, because it, it adopts the same uh, wushu performance choreography of the fighting. Um, which also gives it uh, a, a fantastical element, which works well if you're doing an odd duck like this, which is a PG-13 Disney film that is about war and people killing each other, but it doesn't... Very sanitized. But, but you can't really see it because this is for families. Um, that said, yeah, I, I, I liked uh, that well enough. Uh, the newcomer, Liu, Liu Yifei, is... The girl? Is Mulan. Okay. She, I uh, I guess we're, I, I guess I really have nothing else entirely positive to say. Everything everything that I could say that's nice has a caveat. So 
I have a few notes. I'll just go down them quickly. I knew I was in trouble when everyone spoke English. <laughs> Also, the opening scene when we're introduced to Mulan, she's kind of like, it's meant to show her being mischievous. So she's running around, she ends up on the roof of a structure and then slides off. But the way she secures herself is very sort of like slapsticky. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the tone felt, I mean, it's the opening scene. So I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be sort of like a jovial jaunt, like the cartoon. What do you think the, car the cartoon, if you think about it? Because in the cartoon, they're battling the Huns, uh, uh, led by a character that looks like a, a zombie ogre or orc uh, with predator eyes, uh, voiced by Miguel Ferrer. Uh, and here, it's uh, the, the northern invaders are a group of men led, li led by Boricua, uh, Boricon. I keep thinking... Boricua. <laughs> Boricua. Boricon, uh, who's played by Jason Scott Lee, who... Uh, has portrayed Bruce Lee in a film. Uh, the, there is a personal beef going on because he, the Emperor, played by Jet Li in old man makeup, uh, had defeated Bori Khan's father in some past skirmish. So he's gathered all of these factions uh, that to invade uh, northern China and uh, called Shadow Hunters because there's uh, he he's also aided by a witch played by Gong Li. Um, Shay Yong. Okay. I don't know how we got there, but I was oh, saying that Mulan falling off the roof, I thought that scene was not well done. Kitschy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was, that set the mood. Like everyone's speaking English. There's this opening scene that's kind of, what, the, what is the word you used? Kitschy. Okay. What does that mean? Like, uh, it, it, it's... It felt a little janky to me. I don't know. It, it's, it's silly. It, it's meant to, um invoke a certain feeling that doesn't work for me. <laughs> well, it doesn't work for me. So, like you said, uh, in this live-action version, there's a witch. Mm -hmm. I know the witch is portrayed by a very famous Chinese actor. Gong Li. Mm -hmm. But when I see a witch, I want her to be, like, fabulous, like an Angelina Jolie, or I want her to look like a witch, like Meryl Streep in Into the Woods. But this lady just like a regular, like, middle-aged lady. With, um, uh, Bjork makeup. Well, I don't think she's that interesting. She just has, like, a strip of, like, a, like a super dark, shadowy eye <laughs> is what she has. Catherine Zeta Jones. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, she reminded me of, it reminded me of a kind of thankless role that Monica Bellucci gets shoehorned into uh, a bit. It does feel like she didn't have much to do. Mm -hmm. So, we have this new character, but then we don't have... Because the humor and the comedy in this version of the film is not really present. So we don't have the dragon. Even with the Chancellor, uh, played by Nelson Lee in this, who is voiced by um, the fabulous James Hong in the cartoon version, who's kind of this bitchy, overly flamboyant character, uh, really doesn't even register. Well, I was going to say the dragon's missing, but we have a, like a big ass peacock looking bird, which a, is supposed to be a phoenix, a phoenix, who doesn't do anything except periodically we sort of see it fly in the sky. Well, it's the family emblem that her father gave her, and it's supposed to be obviously symbolic about Mulan, is that, you know, uh, burned this identity she's hiding behind uh, and, and rises from the ashes, per se. The commander, so at a point Mulan wants to, after she meets the witch, I think, she wants to tell the commander her truth. Mm -hmm. So she goes into his little tent office to tell him, I'm a man, or I'm not a man, basically. But he interrupts her and says, oh, you're afraid. And that's good, because if you didn't have fear, then blah, 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 blah. So then before she can even like get her words out, he says, you know what, because you're such a like noble person, when this is all over, I want to introduce you to my daughter so you can marry her. Which I thought was so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Also, probably the biggest issue or the most distracting component of this film compared to the cartoon is Mulan looks like a girl. Yeah. Compared to all of the other people in the army, that is not a man, Maury. And in the cartoon, you can hide it, right? Because all the cartoons have the same skin tone. It just looks like a, little, like a smaller version of everyone mm -hmm. else. But in this movie, that is a lady. That is a young lady. <laughs> it, it is hard to uh, get over that. Uh, obviousness. You said something funny while we were watching it that I wrote down. 
one of the the witch tells Mulan because Mulan confronts the witch like in battle and mm-hmm. tries to defeat her, but she's unsuccessful. But the witch no like knows that Mulan is being deceitful. Mm-hmm. So the witch says, "Your deceit poisons your chi." And I said, "Just like the English." And you said, "And much like speaking in English poisons this film." This thought, film's chi, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Um, so the sort sort of the cult, like the big climax battle scene with the two armies the well because they kidnap the they they're trying to they abduct the emperor they get I'm talking him. about the avalanche part oh the av- okay that's not the end but no but this, this is like the big battle between the two armies which there are things i liked about that scene i like mm. the witch uh, scatters herself into crows and attacks them so they are forced to shield themselves which gets them all in one place so they can um Right, so it causes all of the people on the the Mulan side to like use their shields to make like these domes. Mm -hmm. But then the opposing side has like these huge boulders that they set on fire and shoot. Mm -hmm. So they're successful in like, because it looks like there are like maybe six um, Mm -hmm. like cohorts of these domes. But part of my issue with that scene is it, and with the bulk of the film is it feels very small. Which is my complaint with the Lion King live action remake. Mm-hmm. It just felt very small, which in Lion King, fine. But in this film, it just is like, these don't seem like epic battles. But when we realize that there are several groups of these domes, that's when I realized like, oh, there are a lot of people fighting right now. And then Mulan has the idea that she's going to stop it by creating an avalanche. And from our perspective, she's very far away from that mountain. But this bitch jumps on a horse Mm -hmm. and gets up there lickety split. She causes an avalanche. It rains down on everyone. So the opposing team, some of her people. She, so I thought like that, you said there are parts where you liked. I didn't like how that went down. I thought her on that horse, like right That part does not work for me. It seems, it's just so like. Because she saves her love interest, Huang Hui. Well, he's not her love interest. Kind of. Like there's, there's. Not like the cartoon. Not like the cartoon, but it's clear, it's meant to us that there's supposed to be an attraction between them. Played by Yosan An. Uh, she, it sh- shows her scooping him up on the horse, much as in the cartoon, but it's, um, it's, you don't really see it. It's not very clear in the camera work there. There could be a drinking game for every time a character in this film says the word disgraced. Yeah. Like, it, it's just like, that's the theme of the movie. I think as you were saying that, that was the next line. And then literally, as soon as yeah. I finished saying it while we were watching it, someone says disgrace uh-huh. again. Um, oh, I, can we go back to the um, love interest part with Huang Hui? Uh, I, I think in the live action version, a reason that they um, glossed over that is to avoid any kind of homoeroticism as to people dressed like men sharing an attraction. Which is funny you say that because my next note is I really thought there was going to be some lesbian action between Mulan and the witch. Oh, I wish. But yeah, no, not <laughs> but not, no. not with no. Disney. Um, also, there's... Um, because also for the Chinese market, I think that wouldn't work. Well, we can get into that later. Cause, but um, I have a note that I know you told me, but I forgot that I have hashtag I'm with her. Yeah. What, what is that about? Because after she uh, absconds from uh, the witch denying her offer to join her, uh, she races on her horse to um, go back to her battalion that just told her they'd kill her if she doesn't, uh, if she ever comes back. Oh, they all support her. No, and this, the Sergeant Chang is, she's like, you have to save the emperor. This is their plan. They're doing this. Remember, she's like this. <laughs> yes, um, yes. And then... Uh, uh, Huang Hui uh, stands up for her, and then all the rest of them, including including Cricket, the personification of that little cartoon, it's the dumpy one that's also befriends her. They all stand up, they're like, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, oh, I'm with her, because that's what it felt like. Those are all the notes I had. I, again, did not care for this film. I don't understand the tone. I mean, it seems like this film, sh- you know, it's PG-13. I don't know who the audience is. I cannot picture certainly anyone under 13 watching this film and enjoying it. And then for someone who is above 13, like, like a teenager, the action is not sufficient for these badass teenagers. Like they want to see... Also, if you think about all the Marvel films that are also PG-13, the action in those films are much more exhilarating, more violent. Uh, well, sure. I'm, I'm also, not saying... Also bloodless. I'm not then, saying yeah. that I enjoy them right, but right. more than this film. 
I just was nodding. I had the hardest time staying the, engaged. I think the, the outcome of Mulan, both the cartoon and this live action version, neither of which I particularly cared for, is the meaning that it has for a young right. girl to see. I, I think there there is meaning and importance in these existing, but um, it's it's a very at a very adolescent level. What is the word I learned today? Fa fealty. Fealty. Yeah. F e a l t y. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the like the message behind this film. Yeah, that she is that Mulan, her, her allegiance to her family is. But it doesn't make sense to me because everything is about honor and disgrace, and the fact that Mulan let her dad stay in the village like a chump, mm -hmm. because everyone knows that he's the only man in the family, he's not there, and your daughter's missing. It, it's, that causes more dishonor. Right, but it, it's it's a self-sacrifice tale that reads like propaganda, and one with a happy ending tacked on it for... When I think of every other Disney film, the message is so much more clear and universal, especially when I think about like in the sort of... Uh, portfolio of Disney films and this need to sort of diversify and that's how we got Pocahontas and this film and Princess and the Frog and Coco it just seems like they could have done they could have done better with the cartoon because the cartoon I could go on about with like a lot of the sort of sexist homophobic transphobic which I know back then was not a thing but it's when you think about all the other Disney films and how classic and timeless they are the cartoon Mulan feels dated it does. The live action film feels late, delayed, tired through. <laughs> Who's going to watch this movie? I'm sure it's going to be a big hit. Y'all are going to spend your little $30 on it. I'm sure it will too. I, it, it is, you know, at, at its core, an interesting concept of, of, of women that, despite the odds, ha, and, and how we play with gender roles and norms, I think those the package of it, there, there are things... Well, you said it sounds good, but that, this film's not doing that. No, but... Th as a historical folklore figure, uh, I think Mulan holds um, a fascination that m maybe doesn't equal but comes close to that of like Joan of Arc. Oh, there's no music. There's no singing. Yes, there, there's no singing. But it's it's also why we don't have a Joan of Arc cartoon, I think, because you can't get the past that she was burned at the stake. Um, an another movie that I would point to that showcases uh, the realities of a woman having to masquerade as a man in a misogynistic uh patriarchal society, uh, is a 2003 film from Afghanistan called Osama, directed by Sadiq Barmak, um, about a young girl who has to fend for her family, uh, but women aren't allowed to do that, so she You think to... the audience from Mulan would watch Osama? I don't. I'm just... You can lead a horse to water. Uh, uh, the script... Uh, this was originally announced as a project back in 2010, and I'm not sure, but I think... Um, the previous script was Elizabeth Martin and Lauren Hynek, maybe. Uh, Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver, I uh, guess the top credit, I think, maybe did the rehash. Uh, who are, you know, uh, well-versed screenwriters? I, I just think that this really would have benefited from... I, I, I like that the principals are notable um, Chinese and Hong Kong uh, stars. Like Donnie Yen, who has nothing to do as Commander Tung. Uh, Jet Li, who has nothing to do as the Emperor. I, I appreciate that. Uh, but but I think that this could have been enriched with um, uh, more of a Chinese slant, at least the the language. Uh, yeah. Nikki Caro, I, I think, is a director that I like for the most part. I had the misfortune of the first film I watched by her was a 2009 film called The Vintner's Luck when I saw it at TIFF, and it was renamed as A Heavenly Vintage, which I hated. She's, of course, known for her sophomore film Breakout Whale Rider, which has a lot of similarities with the um, the trajectory of Mulan. Uh, she did Far North with Charlize Theron, set in Minnesota. Um, the Zookeeper's Wife with Jessica Chastain, also a film that shouldn't have been in English because it's set in Poland, uh, but Jessica Chastain does such a good job with that Polish accent that you might uh, you buy into it. And they're at that zoo that we were at. Um, and just to give Nikki Caro a little credit, I think this is a big deal that uh, she did helm this film. It just, I, I think that when you are at uh, beholden to a film studio, your uh, control is limited. Wikipedia says the budget was two hundred million. I want to know where all the money went. <laughs> I'm uh, done. It was shot by Mandy Walker, uh, the Australian DP, uh, who shot Baz Luhrmann's Australia Hidden Figures. A lot of this seems, yeah, like. Kind of green screeny maybe, but um, we could be done. It, if you want. it doesn't look terrible. It just doesn't look what like what you'd expect. I don't know. I feel 
I don't know. I don't know why I didn't like the cartoon, but I feel I'm not trying to disparage the film unnecessarily. I just thought it was really dull. What would you give this film? One and a half out of five stars. I would give it two out of five. I mean, it was at least as... I probably had a, a better time watching this than Bill and Ted Feast the Music, but... Anyway. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All bye. Right, bye. <laughs>